Welcome to the Getting Started with GeoStudio video series. This tutorial will introduce how to set up a one-dimensional analysis in version 9 of GeoStudio. First, we will set up a one-dimensional analysis as a new project by opening the key in project window. Note, in the project settings, the coordinate system must be set as two-dimensional even when creating a one-dimensional analysis as this indicates that the coordinate space is in a two-dimensional plane. Next, we will add a steady state seepage analysis to our analysis tree. This will create a water transfer analysis with the water transfer option automatically activated. Now to change our analysis dimension to one dimensional, we will go to the settings tab of the seepage analysis and change the analysis dimension from 2D to 1D. Next, we will draw our one-dimensional domain. This is done by creating a line segment using Draw Lines. For this analysis, we will simply use a 5 meter column as an example. Now, we will add material properties to our domain. We will go to Draw, Materials, and you will notice that when the one-dimensional option is activated, materials can only be applied to lines. Now, we will add boundary conditions to the domain. We will go to Key In, Boundary Conditions, and you can see that I have added a unit flux boundary condition to the default boundary conditions of zero pressure and potential seepage phase. Note that when applying a unit flux boundary condition to a point of a one-dimensional analysis, both of the width and the out-of-plane dimension are implicitly one unit. To apply these conditions to the domain, we will open Draw Boundary Conditions. For the one-dimensional analysis, we need to ensure that the Points option is activated prior to applying the boundary condition. In this example, we will apply the zero pressure boundary condition to the bottom node and the unit flux boundary condition to the top node. Next, I will briefly show how a one-dimensional analysis can be completed on a two-dimensional domain. In this example, we have a simple column region that could be used to create a pseudo one-dimensional analysis in previous GeoStudio versions. First, we must remove our material properties from the region. Then, we will remove the boundary conditions from the upper and lower lines. Now we are left with our two-dimensional region. To change our analysis dimension to 1D, we will go into Key In Project and into the Settings tab for the seepage analysis. We will then change the analysis dimension from 2D to 1D. Again, we must check the project settings at the top of our analysis tree to ensure that the two-dimensional co coordinate system is activated. Now, we can return to our seepage analysis and apply the material properties to one of the column boundaries. In this case, I will use the left boundary of the region. Next, I will apply the boundary conditions and ensure that the points option is activated prior to applying the zero pressure boundary condition to the bottom node and the unit flux to the top node. I am now ready to run a one-dimensional analysis on a line within my two-dimensional domain. As a last note, I will take a look at the one-dimensional mesh. We will click on the Draw Mesh Properties button and we will see that the current global element size is set to 0.5 meters. If I zoom in on the upper one meter of the column, you can see there is only one node in between the nodes at 4 and 5 meters. I will reduce my global element size to 0 0.01 meters. Now you can see many more nodes appear along the line segment. If I zoom in again, you can see a node has been placed every 0 0.01 meter along the one dimensional domain to accommodate this new global element size. To summarize, in version 9 of GeoStudio, a true one dimensional analysis can be simulated instead of the pseudo one-dimensional analysis of previous versions. This means that a one-dimensional analysis can be conducted along any line of a two-dimensional domain. When conducting a one-dimensional analysis, 
The use of line segments and points are required for assigning material properties and boundary conditions respectively. The mesh refinement is conducted entirely on the one-dimensional domain with the element width and out-of-plane dimension implicitly set to one unit. Thank you for watching.